I'm a little late making this video. I've been a little busy. It's been a few days since the last race, the first Atlanta race. Uh, the second one is this evening. So I'll just try to make this short since nobody's thinking about this race anymore. Atlanta won. The track was brutal. Minute 40 second lap time. Not quite what I thought. Rain might have had a little bit to do with it, making it a little bit longer, but honestly, I only think it would have been a few seconds faster if there was no rain. So the fact that it was close to the MX simulator times was kind of cool. Uh, and I guess I forgot who it was. Shout out to Sheepish Enduro. You get the big thumbs up because you were the closest with times. But the thing that I thought would not happen because of the long lap time was lapper issues. And guess what? It still happened. It does not matter, I guess, how long the lap times are because you're still going to have lapper issues. Maybe. Sometimes. The lappers, uh, there weren't very many. They only lapped up to 16th, which I, they normally lap up to like 10th about the 450s do. 250s might lap a little bit more than the 450s do on average. But we saw a lot of good racing, a lot of fast racing towards the end of the moto where lappers didn't get in the way at all, which that was nice seeing Sexton and Tomac duke it out without having to work around anybody. That that was really cool to see because they were going so fast. It was insane. Didn't really make sense. Those guys are on a whole other level that is not comprehensible to me. It's really fun to watch. It is really fun to watch. But then pretty much with a lap to go. Oh, Cade. That sucks. I don't think he did anything really wrong. He could have got out of the way a little bit better, but he held his line. I don't know. It was kind of weird. If you go back and look, I think he might have only got one blue flag. The whole section leading up, if you look back, there is no AMA official. There's no flagger holding a blue flag in that entire section from the, the whoop section after the over under bridge thing all the way to the finish line. There is no official holding a blue flag, which is really weird to me. We saw it with Dean Wilson, that whole situation, that he got the blue flag like 10 times about. And with Fries, he was in the process of getting lapped. Uh, but this one, one blue flag all by himself, held his line. Sexton probably should have been able to get by him. I don't see anything wrong really with what Cade did. I mean, he could have gone a little bit higher in the berm, but then when he's coming down, he would have been in Tomac's way. So when you're in the moment, I, I don't know. Has he posted anything saying uh, his side of it? Quote on his Instagram, I didn't know Chase was that close. Watching it over again, they caught me a ton from the sand to that turn. And if you look from the sand to that turn, there is zero blue flags. I don't think I'm wrong in this. The camera angles are bad, but when you just go back and look, there's no official there that had a blue flag. There was no flagger that had a blue flag. So I, I do think that Cade is being honest, that he had no idea that they were there. Those guys are so fast, they can catch you way faster than you think. So I don't, I don't think that there's anything, nothing to be done there. No penalty, no stupid anything. These lappers, I'm getting a little tired of it. But it's part of the sport, and that's what you have to deal with. Every single motorsport has to deal with lappers. The pinnacle of motorsports, Formula One, has to deal with lappers. Esteban Ocon, Ocon, o Ocon, Ocon, that is really weird to say. He took out Max Verstappen as a lapper in Formula One. All motorsports have to deal with this. So getting uh, black flagged when you're getting lapped is, I, in my opinion, I don't like that suggestion at all it lappers are part of the racing and they will always be part of the racing and just getting rid of them is not I don't, I don't know i just don't agree with it like i said though without lappers towards the end of the race when there's so few compared to a normal supercross race and seeing them sexton and tomac battle so hard was really cool to see so i understand the merit behind that suggestion but i don't agree with it and then last but definitely not least, really seems that this championship is done. I think Roxon is now 22 points back. He got ninth place. 
he was 10th place going over the finish line on the first lap, and he pretty much didn't go anywhere. Dylan Ferrandis was in 15th going over the finish line, and he made his way all the way up into 5th. So there's not really any excuse that the track was hard to pass on because Dylan Ferrandis was able to pass on it. So I don't know what was going on with Roxon, but he definitely didn't show up, and that's such a bummer because it definitely seems like this championship is over, and it just kind of sucks because I wanted, and I'm sure you guys wanted, this championship to go to the last round, but it's not looking that way. Webb is just so mentally strong. He's going to be, I think, on the podium every single round. It's going to take something big to happen for Roxon to make his way back up. He's going to have to win every single race from here on out. And Webb's going to have to have a bike issue, a crash, knock on wood. You don't want anybody to crash, but it's going to need something like that. Roxon is going to need something like that to have any chance, but it's not looking very good, is it? It's not looking very good. So Atlanta 2 is tonight. Hopefully no lapper situation. I'm excited to see what the lap times are on a drier track, not such a gnarly track because that track was insane. It was so treacherous. I can't believe that they're riding that fast on it. Unreal. But yeah, see what the lap times are. Hopefully no more lappers. See if Roxon can step it up and see if Webb can keep it going. And I think he can. So yeah, Atlanta 1. On to Atlanta 2.